Hello everyone, I'm Pastor George Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast today. We are in day four of 10 days of prosperity. What a time we are having. Thank you, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, for allowing me to be on this broadcast. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have been my wonderful mother and father-in-law. Lo, these 33 years. My goodness, what a blessing you are to us, to the body of Christ, to me, to our family. Thank you for who you are and what you do for the body. And really what I'm talking about in this 10 days of prosperity, I got it all from them. You know, you hang around them like I have, and we've been in all kinds of situations together, and I have the opportunity to watch them on the platform and behind the scenes, and they are certainly people who stand on the Word of God. What an outstanding example they have been and are to me, to my family, to my children, to my grandchildren, which also are their great-grandchildren. We are walking in 10 days of prosperity, and that's what the Lord spoke to me about for these sessions that we're having, 10 days of intensive study, 10 days of just bearing down and bearing into prosperity. And today, the topic of what I want to talk to you about is thriving in the midst of famine. Take a look at Genesis chapter 26, and I'm going to read some scripture to you, and then I'm, make, and then I'm going to make some comment about that scripture. We are thriving even in the midst of famine. Chapter 26, and in verse 1, there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine <clears throat> that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, in Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Don't go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. Sojourn in the land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For unto you and unto your seed, and I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. <clears throat> and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed." Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. And Isaac stayed. He dwelled in the land of Gerar. And in verse 12, in the midst of that famine, it said, Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. Isaac was the richest man on the earth at that time. And at that time, there was what was called a famine in the land. A famine, we could call a famine in this modern day time that we are in, we could call a famine a time of severe shortage, extreme scarcity, serious economic downturn. Now you see me looking at my notes. All of these notes are available to you. Go to kcm.org, click on to the sweet spot, and you'll see their pastor's notes, and you can download these. You can study them. Pastors, ministers, you can preach these messages. Now, this particular message is three pages long. We're not going to cover it all today, but you can get the rest of it. But I did research the, the, the word famine, and it means a severe shortage, an extreme scarcity, and serious economic downturn. And it is, it's, it, we are experiencing times like that on the earth. And it's a scary time for people that do not know God. It's a scary time for people that do not know their covenant with God. And there is fear. There's a temptation to fear in these times. But you and I, look at me, look at me. I sound like Jesse, look at me. We do not fear during these times. We are not afraid we are not in a place of uncertainty or hopelessness. We know where we're going, and we know who we serve, and we know what kingdom we are in, and we know what our economic uh, system we stand on. And so in the midst of this famine, famine, in the middle of that famine, Isaac sowed and he reaped the hundredfold. Same conditions, different results. 
I did some research in the Word of God about famine and what happens during the famine and what happens to us. What happens to you? What happens to me? When the nation is experiencing any kind of an economic downturn or a situation like that, or what we might call a famine, a present-day famine, what about us? What, what happens to us in times like this? Well, I'm going to give you three scriptures that talk about what the Word tells us in famine. First of all, in Job chapter 5, verses 20 and 22, Job 5, 20 and 22 in the New Living Translation, it says, He will save you from death in time of famine. You will laugh at destruction and famine. That's a great scripture. That's a great scripture. He'll save you from death or he'll save you from ruin in times of famine. And, and, and you'll be in a place where you are so settled on the word of God and walking in such prosperity that you will laugh at famine. <laughs> to laugh in the face of famine. Now, laughter in the spirit is like praise and it will stop and still the enemy. And laughter really is what the Bible calls, it's like medicine. It'll minister to you to laugh in the face of famine. You ought to do that sometime when you're, when you're sitting with your bills and you may be in a position right now where you, you are experiencing having to walk by faith where your bills are concerned and you're sitting there at your table and you are looking at these bills and determining who's going to be paid and who is not, and you take Job 5, 20 and 22, and you start laughing at famine. <laughs> Praise God in the midst of this. You've got to do that. Well, in the midst of a famine, it said he'll save you from death, or he'll save you from financial failure in the middle of a famine. In Psalm 33, 18 and 19, the eye is the Lord upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. So he keeps us alive. That's what he did with Isaac. He kept him alive. He kept him vibrant. He kept him in a place uh, of, of unfailing love. The New Living Translation says, relying on his unfailing love. Psalm 37, 18 and 19, even in famine, now this is King James, even in famine, they will have more than enough. I like that. Even in famine, even in a time of a, a strained economy, you will have more than enough. You know, people think to themselves in a strained economy, you know, we're doing good if we can just pay our bills and get up even. No, don't settle for that. Don't do that. Don't settle for less than God's best. No, it says right here, Psalm 37, 18, even in famine, they will have more than enough. Do you know what the Hebrew translation of that says? I'll tell you. It says, he will supply until no more is needed. In famine, we're not talking about the good times. We're not talking about the times. I just felt like Brother Copeland just then. We're not talking about the times when everything is looking good. We're talking about famine, serious economic situation. And even in famine, they will have more than enough. And the Lord spoke to me in 2009 and, and had me teach a series in church about thriving and gave me this word, we do not just survive. We thrive. Now stop saying, well, we're just surviving. How are you doing? How's your business doing? Well, we're surviving. No, you're not. Surviving, I heard one time somebody de defining the word survive means to be barely alive. We're not barely alive. We're not almost dead. We're vibrant and we're living. We are not just surviving. We are thriving. I think about I think about those shows on TV where they have people like Survivor Man and people like that. Have you watched that before? I have. And they, they drop a guy out in the middle of nowhere and he's got to live on bugs and sleep in the rain. And boy, he just carries the camera with him. He's like, oh, oh, not going to eat, eat, this, eat this snake. And, and you know, that's, that's survival. 
you and I are not just surviving. You and I are thriving. We are thriving. We are prospering. We are flourishing. We are succeeding. We are advancing. Those are all words that mean thrive. We are growing vigorously. That's what thrive means. We are increasing in goods and estates. That's thriving. That's thriving. The blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22 says, it makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Well, in this, we found that Isaac was thriving in this famine time. And it's interesting that the Lord told him, you stay right where you are. He wanted to leave, but the Lord st said, stay right where you are. So maybe right where you are right now is an area that, that needs God in its finances. But in the place where you are right now, God needs you there. God, puts, God has us in places to be able to lift up the economic stature of the area. Pastors, you have a jurisdiction with your churches. And your churches, the jurisdiction that you have is to completely change and transform the, the area around you. We have a jurisdiction. Our jurisdiction is Fort Worth. That's our jurisdiction. Now, we have some prayer power where Dallas is concerned and Texas and the United States, but I got to tell you, Fort Worth is my jurisdiction. Fort Worth is the jurisdiction of the pastors. And by golly, we are declaring that Fort Worth is a city of God. We are declaring that the righteousness of God reigns in Fort Worth and all corruption and all drugs and all kinds of underhanded dealing must leave Fort Worth. And we pray that and we declare that Fort Worth is a thriving city. Well, that's my jurisdiction. That's the prayer jurisdiction that I have. I'm right in this area. And Isaac was the same way. The Lord said, you stay right there and I want you to prove a point. Isaac, I want you to prove a point. I want you to prove to these people that your God, Jehovah Yireh, the God that supplies is there for you and he will take care of you in spite of what's going on around you. God needs us here right now. God needs us in this nation. He needs us in the United... Now is not the time to bail. Now is not the time to bail our nation in the midst of the financial situations where we are in. Now is the time for us to pray and to believe God and to pray for our president and to pray for the cabinet and to pray for our judges and to pray for our senators in the House of Representatives and for you and I to be demonstrators of prosperity in the midst of famine. There is a scripture that I read one time. Actually, Dennis Burke was preaching at a minister's conference and gave us the scripture. And my goodness, it's highlighted and circled in my Bible. It's Zechariah 8.13. And Zechariah 8.13 in the New Living Ta Translation says, Among the nations, Judah and Israel had become symbols of what it means to be cursed, but no longer. Now I will rescue you and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing. Wow. A symbol and a source of blessing. So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged, but instead get on with rebuilding the temple. So you and I are on this earth and you and I are <clears throat> in whatever nation you are in right now. If you're in the United States, if you're in Europe, if you're in Australia, wherever you are in this world, and if you're a pastor, you have jurisdiction, you are a symbol and a source of the blessing. A symbol and a source of the blessing. In Genesis 12, verses 2 and 3, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you'll be a blessing dispensing good to others. In you will all the families of the earth be blessed and by you they will, be, they will bless themselves. <clears throat> In Psalm 21, 6, you made him to be blessed and to be a blessing forever. God blesses us in the midst of famine so that we can reach out and bless others. He financially blesses you so that you can help your neighbors and the people that you work with. And they'll come to you and say, I don't know what to do. We've got bills that have to be paid and the creditors are after us. And you'll sit there and you'll say to them, in the midst of this famine, God has blessed us. What can I help you with? 
and you'll sit there and write out a check and pull it out and give it to them and they'll say, what kind of God do you know? Well, that's the God that Isaac served and that's the God that you and I serve, that in the midst of this famine, he sowed and received in the same year a hundredfold return. Now, I've done a lot of research about this and I've dug into it and the particular area in Gerar was not very great where the soil was concerned. It was not the best soil for growing. Yet, yet, Isaac sowed and he reaped, uh, in the research I did, he reached an unusual yield. Uh, <clears throat> even in the fertile regions, even in the fertile regions, they would not have any greater than a 25 to 50 fold. But in this impoverished, dry, famine area, Isaac sowed and he reaped the 100 fold return. Here's a scripture that you need to be confessing and believing God in. Psalm 65, 11 through 13 in the New Living Translation. You crown my year with a bountiful harvest. This year that we are in, God's crowning it with a bountiful harvest. And even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The wilderness becomes a lush pasture and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. Now Isaac sowed and in the same year he reaped the hundredfold return. And he didn't give up. Even in that midst of famine, and also, even in the fact that they were covering up, covering over his wells, he didn't give up, he didn't quit, he just kept going, he just kept digging another well, and he did not leave his place of faith. The Lord has given me five things to give to you, things that in order to thrive in the midst of famine, these are, these are things that you must continue doing. These are things that we cannot stop doing. These are things that we cannot give up on in the middle of a famine situation. Let me give them to you. And these were things that Isaac was doing. Isaac, number one, he kept obeying God. You've got to keep obeying God. You must keep obeying God. Obedience is where the blessing is. Isaiah 1, 8, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So Isaac obeyed. We need to keep obeying. Wherever God tells you to sow, wherever God tells you to go, wherever God tells you to be, you need to be obedient. Now, in the midst of famine, number two, Isaac kept sowing seed. He kept sowing seed. It's always a good time to sow seed in the kingdom of heaven. There's never a bad time to sow seed. So he kept sowing. He kept tithing. Now, how do, you, how do I know that he kept tithing? There wasn't anything that was said there about tithing. Well, <clears throat> you have to understand that Abraham, his father, was a tither. He tithed to Melchizedek and that Abraham taught his children well. And I believe that Abraham would take Isaac with him when he would go to Melchizedek and he taught him about the tithe. So Isaac did not quit tithing. Now, you don't quit tithing either. Don't quit tithing. You keep tithing and <clears throat> you will stay under the open windows of heaven. So you've got to keep obeying God. You've got to keep sowing seed and you've got to keep tithing. Now, another thing we have to do, we've got to keep walking by faith. And Isaac did not quit walking by faith. He stayed in there. He stayed in there. And that's the same thing you got to do. You've got to stay in the ring. You got to stay in the ring. Do not throw in the towel. Do not quit. Stay in the good fight of faith. Hebrews eleven thirty five. Do not fling away your fearless confidence for it carries a great and a glorious compensation of reward. I like Galatians 6, 9 in the Amplified. Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, if we do not relax, 
uh, we will not, and not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep obeying God. Let's keep sowing seed. Let's keep tithing. Let's keep on walking by faith. Keep the words of your mouth in line. Keep on feeding the word of God down into your spirit. And listen, this last one, number five, keep going to church. Keep going to church. Stay in church. Stay in church. We need to remain connected to the source of the Word of God coming into us. Stay in church. Stay with the broadcast. Keep listening to those CDs and keep feeding your spirit and keep that Word going down on the inside. This is a confession that we made in our church. And I want to declare this over you right now. And you can, again, <clears throat> you can get this online. But this is what we're saying. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. I'm going up higher. I'm going to keep obeying. I'm going to keep sowing. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep receiving. And I'm going to keep walking by faith. Even in a time of famine, we are thriving. We are prospering. We are flourishing. We are succeeding. We are advancing. We are growing vigorously. And we are increasing. Praise God. I believe that you are thriving in the midst of famine. And you are walking in God with him. He's on you. He's through you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thrive in a time of famine. Our businesses, our families, and our lives are thriving. Lord, we thank you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You stay right there. I'll be right back with you. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. It's when you don't feel like he's there, you better believe he's there. Amen. Yes, sir. That's when you need to be believing what you know in the Word instead of what you feel. August 19th through 20th, get involved at the 2016 Living Victory Anaheim with Kenneth and Kelly Copeland at the Hilton Hotel in Anaheim, California. September 16th through 17th, get connected at Living Victory Orlando at the Rosen Shingle Creek Hotel in Orlando, Florida. September 22nd through 24th, Word Explosion with the Copelands and guests in Columbia, South Carolina with special benefits for veterans and military personnel. October 14th through 15th, join the Copelands at the 2016 Venezuela Victory Campaign in Maracaibo, Estado de Zulia, Venezuela. For every expectation, every desire, Are you coming home, Dad? every responsibility, there's a bill that needs to be paid. When it comes to cash flow, too often we find ourselves more overcome than on top. To turn the tables, you need a paradigm shift, an awakening. To get what you've never had, you have to do what you've never done. Total immersion in the Word. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to equip you with the same life-changing tools that empowered them to annihilate financial turmoil and live an abundant, debt-free life. When activated, the 10-day spiritual action plan for complete financial breakthrough equips you to think spiritually about your finances, positioning you for financial breakthrough, paving the way for a productive attitude for wealth and prosperity. No matter what financial challenge you face, with God, all things are possible. Request your free copy of the Financial Breakthrough Package today from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. The package includes your 10-day spiritual action plan for complete financial breakthrough and an MP3 series by Pastor George Pearsons on living your life stress-free. Call 877-615-4267 and take advantage of this free TV offer. You can live free from debt and stress that is associated with it. Order your copy today free offer good for 60 days. Now listen, 
Today, I want to remind you that this product that we're offering, the 10-day spiritual action plan for your financial breakthrough, this will help you get immersed in the Word of God. It'll help you to be able to stand on God's Word. And what, just one of the benefits of this, and I'll pull this out here, this is one of the Scripture cards that we have. I mean, this whole package just has all kinds of great things in it, but you can take a Scripture card out. You can confess the script. For instance, here's one, God wishes above all things that I may prosper and be in health even as my soul prosper. So you keep that with you and you allow that to minister to you. And it'll make a great Christmas gift. Give it to those that need some help financially at this time. They will be blessed by that. Take it on into the new year and encourage your friends and family to take that 10-day trip in immersing yourself and getting financially free. I am looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And tomorrow... We're going to be talking about walking in the fullness of the blessing. You are blessed, you are prosperous, you are thriving, and praise God, Jesus is Lord of our lives. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available free on DVD, CD, or digital download, MP3 or MP4. Call 877-615-4267. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's free TV offer. These Word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. This is the time for miracles. Receive all God has for you in the great year. I had a politician poke me in the shoulder like the, the smirk on his face. He said, Copeland, if you guys had get it together, you could control Capitol Hill, but you ain't never gonna do it. And so far, I'm sorry to say he's been right. But them days are over forever. Things is a changing, glory to God. This election year, many may be saying, why should I vote when I don't like my options? I don't like any of the candidates. The truth is, your vote is your seed. As a believer, you have a responsibility to vote. It's important to read and understand the candidate's party platform. That platform is what the candidate is standing on, what they're speaking from, and what they will make decisions based upon. For example, one party's platform states that the unborn child has a fundamental right to life. Another party's platform says they believe it's a woman's right to abort her pregnancy. Comparing the two gives you a clear understanding of how that candidate's party will represent you, the voter. As you read through the platforms, listen to the Holy Spirit and determine which one of those platforms represents your Christian values the most. You are first and foremost a Christian. Those values define how you should vote. This election year, vote and vote God.